And welcome to our April edition of Sports Highlights right here on NNPS TV. My name is Greg Bicaveros, at Greg Bick on Twitter. Our program comes on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, 517, and anywhere on NNPSTV.com. Please tell your friends. Our first guest today is Brian Leibert, the head boys soccer coach at Menchville High School in your fourth year, correct? Fourth year, yep. Time flies by, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, you went to CNU. Talk about your uh, background, how you got involved in soccer. Okay, so uh, I grew up in the Northern Virginia area, um, Woodbridge, to about 20 minutes south of D.C. Uh, always kind of gravitated towards sports. Both of my parents played sports in college and stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I went with baseball, uh, basketball, and soccer. Baseball, I didn't have the attention span for, so no shot there. Went through soccer, uh, cried my way for, through a couple practices, and then just kind of stuck with it. Uh, went to high school up in Wood at Woodbridge High School. Um, played uh, three years varsity, uh, one year JV. Was pretty decent player as all met, um, but wasn't like spectacular. And uh, I was pretty close to going to school to not play soccer at all. Uh, I got recruited at a couple D1 schools, but I didn't really like it. And then someone said, you know, you should go check out CNU. And I had never even heard of it. And um, so I came down here and. Uh, had a heck of a recruiting trip, and the coach was like, you can have number 19, and I said, okay, let's do it, and I came down here on a whim and uh, fell in love with it, and, you know, from the second I started playing uh, my freshman year, didn't step off the field, and it was, like, the best experience of my life. I was kind of like you, but opposite, I grew up here, went to George Mason, so I got to ask you, as a George okay. Mason graduate, why didn't you go to George Mason? I did get accepted there, um, so it was either there, JMU, or a couple other schools, that, you know, the Lynchburgs and some other mm -hmm. Division three schools to play soccer, um, but I, I kind of, my parents were kind of like, you need to go play somewhere, and I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's get out of the house. Yeah. Why is there always gridlock in Woodbridge, the traffic? Yeah. Why Woodbridge of all Honestly, places? Honestly, I think you would be the president of the United States if you had the answer to that. Yeah. Because it is miserable. The, my wife's from Roanoke, so she's a very small town. And um, I was like, we, this was like our happy medium. I was like, I can't live up there anymore. I can't, you know, spend 20 minutes going to the grocery store. I was like, I got to get away from it. And the beach helps, too. More like an hour. Yeah. All right, before we talk about Menchville, seeing you Hall of Fame, talk about how that experience went down. It was awesome. Um, so uh, a few weeks ago, um, we got to go in the Freeman Center. They brought us out at halftime, and uh, all the other Hall of Famers were there. Uh, a couple of guys I knew. There's a few soccer players, and then one of the dads actually that I coach, his son at Menchville, was a uh, got inducted for baseball. Um, so we got to go out there, and all my family came in, and some of my teammates, and my, all my coaches were there, and it was it was phenomenal. And you know, it's it, it's an honor that I'll never forget. And I got to share with my family, and it, it was just so much fun. Now, what position did you play? I played center mid for most of my career, and then towards the end, I played forward a little bit. Very good. We're talking to Brian Leibert, who is from Northern Virginia, who's the head boy soccer coach at Menchville High School. All right, talk about Menchville's soccer team. How has it evolved since year one? Right, so um, actually I got involved uh, right uh, my assistant coach at CNU, Ryan Haggerty, coaches at York, or coached at York. Um, and so my first year out of college, and when I was in college for a year, I coached JV there to kind of, you know, dip my toes in and get used to it because you know, it's a big jump from JV to varsity. Um, so I did that for a year and a half, uh, two years, and then one of my teammates, David Haas, uh, his mom still coaches and um, teaches at Menchville. He was there for a year. Um, he's a firefighter, moved up to Northern Virginia, actually. Um, and he said, hey, you know, Liber, do you want this? You want this job? It's, it's an awesome job and good group of kids that we've been grooming kind of, you know, the CNU mentality, how we, you know, coach our kids and how we play. And I said, yeah, uh, let's do it. I went in for an interview and, you know, the principal gave me the OK. So since then, it's been four years and uh, I've loved it. And so this is my first year with my, you know, after four years, I got my freshmen as seniors now and it's really starting to pay off. So. I mean, we have 15 seniors, so it's it's a ton. Um, How many coaches are you allowed to have coach with you as far as paid volunteer? Uh, so the only paid uh, coach is the JV coach. 
um, which is very difficult for us, obviously, since JV and varsity don't play together like the uh, Bay Rivers district. So I have um, two other assistants. David Haas, actually, the guy who gave me the job, moved back down here. Um, he's a firefighter now in Williamsburg. Um, him and his wife live up there. And so he comes and mostly helps out for games because uh, he just had a kid a couple weeks ago. So he, he's, you know, sporadic. But then I also have Bryce Fail, who played at Menchville, graduated a couple years ago for me. And he's local, uh, works at the shipyard now, too, and he's been helping me out. Very good. We're talking to Brian Leibert, head boy, soccer coach. Brian, are you trying to focus more on fundamentals for these kids that you see a lack of fundamentals, even though they have uh, different types of summer camps and leagues outside of the season? Is that the big issue with soccer in high school? Yeah, it's tough. It's really hard to find a balance because, you know, we only have these kids for two, two and a half, three months. And, you know, when you have 30 kids out there with really one or two coaches, it's hard to, you know, take a kid beside who needs to work on his left-footed passing and say, okay, we're going to spend 30 minutes on passing. Like, that doesn't work because then 29 kids are standing there like, what are we supposed to do? So, you know, a lot of it comes down to, I think, um, you know, tactics and, you know, just doing what we got to do to win games. I, I coach a lot of kids. Um, I have a few kids that are going to school. One's going to Bridgewater. Uh, to play center mid and the other my goalkeeper is going to Hampton Sydney um, and I also have a, a bunch of other kids that play for Legacy in Williamsburg uh, a very good club um, and so this sometimes they play positions that they're not used to playing just because I don't have time to you know get somebody else in this position and work with them on individual things because we only have an hour and a half two hours every day for you know three months. And it's tough when it gets dark early, but now we're in the spring, we're, in, we're into April, and it's a lot easier. What about the competition as far as soccer and Newport News and Hampton? Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, uh, our district is always tough, um, especially lately with uh, Kickatan and, you know, Warwick and all those guys. And Warwick's always the fun game to play. Um, you know, I told these guys it's kind of like I relate everything to CNU. So it's like when CNU played Virginia Wesleyan, it didn't matter how good – CNU or Virginia Wesleyan was the score was going to be two to one or one to nothing or three to two. So it's like whenever we play Warwick, no matter which one of us is having a good or bad year, it's going to be a dog fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I, that that's what makes it fun playing these guys who are so close. They all grow up together, play on the same club team, and we get to go you know face them. And the coaches know each other now, so it's it's a lot of fun. You've seen soccer all over the state. How would you compare Northern Virginia, Richmond to this area? Uh, it's completely different. So you know I had maybe fifty kids tops at my tryouts in Northern Virginia. I mean, my school, Woodbridge, had 4,000 kids. So, I mean, we had like four days of cuts. And, wow. And so it was a little, I came down here, to be honest, when I, my first day, in York's even smaller than Menchville. So my first day at York, I, I go out to tryouts and I'm like, we're not going to win a game. Right. <laughs> like, there's only 20 kids here at tryouts. What are we going to do? And l luckily, you know, and how Menchville is as well, it's a lot of the kids trying out are kind of, you know, the good players. You know, a lot of some guys who don't, I, in Woodbridge, we had kids who didn't play soccer come try out. That doesn't really happen as much down here. Very nice, but you also got to remember the MLS team is up there too. Right. So there's more of a European soccer influence there front and center, I would say. Correct, correct, yep. So talk about uh, what the goals are for the remainder of the season. Well, honestly, so uh, district play will be starting uh, here soon. Um, so without the, the conference tournament, every game is important. So how it works is the 15, the top 15 teams in the region, um, there, well, there's 15 teams in our region, the top eight go to the tournament. So um, we have to win pretty much every, every game against our, you know, our conference guys to, to guarantee a spot in regionals. And uh, that's always our main goal is since I've been here, we haven't, we've been to regionals twice and we haven't, we've gotten, we lost in PKs the first one and lost by one the second one. So our, my main goal is to, you know, win a regional game and go from there. Obviously the, the ultimate goal is to win states, but you got to get there first. So what about some of the top colleges in the state that kids can go to for soccer? Yeah, I mean, uh, I obviously, uh, I have a couple going, one going to Bridgewater and one going to Hampton Sydney. We have a lot of D3 schools, and I think, you know, especially talking with Coach Shaw at CNU, I was like, man, you guys got to, like, you know, do some recruiting around here. And they try to, William & Mary grabs kids from, you know, I think they have one coming from Jamestown, and um, there's a lot of local talent all around. The World Cup's going on this summer, but there's no United States team. How difficult is that for interest? It's very difficult. You know, I have a lot of friends, um, you know, me, obviously, I like to watch pretty much any soccer. Um, but, you know, for the, you know, the standard fan who just, you know, is patriotic and wants to see the U.S. play and they can't see it, it's it's tough. And, you know, 
it's, it's tough for us and for outsiders because, you know, we are so good at every sport. And then you're telling me we can't get a soccer team that can beat, you know, some of these countries that have an eighth of our population. It doesn't seem right. You're exactly right because you know this, the way we grew up, football, basketball, baseball was the king. Hockey was kind of the redheaded stepchild and so was soccer. Here is soccer's front and center in the World Cup. The casual fan wants to watch the World Cup, but right. they can't root for America. Right. It's, That's tough. It is, you know, and it's like... Yeah, I wish I really wish we could have done it, and uh, but we gotta we gotta figure out a way to make it make it better here in the country. All right, speaking of making it better, how can and what advice would you give to a girl or a boy that wants to play soccer at any level? I think technique is everything. You know, I I do a lot of personal training with um, younger people and younger players because I think it's fun, um, and I want them to get the technique early because I get a lot of kids like like you asked that. Aren't, don't know what they're doing by the time they get to me and I don't have time to do it. So, you know, it's the simple stuff, you know, like just going out and juggling and every single day when I was growing up, we had a, we had a tennis court with just a brick wall and I'd go there every day and just kick it against it because a wall never takes a bad touch. I mean, it, it gives it right back to you however you gave it to them. So uh, you just go out there and you just work on your juggling, throw your, I mean, these kids all have iPhones, just throw some have some music in there and just go for it. It seems like the advantage is before practice starts, to do as much as you can the before and after. Just right. don't wait to practice because by then it's too late. Right. Your competition's already practicing. No, yep, absolutely. And like I said earlier, you know, you got one coach for 20, 30 kids and they're not going to be able to work on every little thing you need to. Yeah, you talk about uh, soccer, how it's uh, changed as far as the dimensions. How many players on the field for high school and college? It's the same. So it's it's 11 v 11. Um, I think, I don't know, maybe U10 it changes um, it, when it's like 8 or 7. But it's 11 and 11 for uh, high school and college. As far as the time, how will the time work as far as halves and so forth? Yeah, so uh, for high school it's 40, 40 minute halves and then for college it's 45 minutes and there's no stoppage time like right. in professional. Unless you know, there's like a major injury, right, correct? Yeah, normally they'll stop the clock but you know if you watch like a World Cup game or an English Premier League game they'll they'll let the clock keep going and then add time on after. What is it so popular about the English Premier League? You go somewhere to a restaurant or an establishment, that stuff is on, it's front and center. Yeah, I, I love it. It's, um, first of all, it's the the most, you know, the only foreign league that's actually shown here. I mean, you wake up, the time difference, obviously, so like me and my friends will wake up around 7.30, watch the first round of games, the second round's on around 10, 11. Um, but it's, I mean, the fans there are like, just picture any NFL or crazy fan times 100. And that's yes, what cool especially at World Cup, you can hear those bells whistling now. Yep. How does a kid know what position he wants to play? Meaning, I'm always intrigued by the goalie in soccer and hockey because that's kind of like a standalone position. You're kind of in an island by yourself. But how do you know you want to be a forward? Right, you know, I, I think it's, I think a little bit is a mindset. You know, if you, some, some guys are super competitive and it's like, I want to score goals and I want to do that for the team, then that's where they play. You know, there's no there's no real like side. Usually, um, the defenders are a little taller than the forwards because they got to win all the head balls and stuff like that. Um, and goalkeepers is just a different breed. I don't know how they do it. And I guess they just like using their hands. I don't know. And I tell all my kids like, I can never be a goalkeeper because you could be you know you could be the fourth best midfielder on your team and play a ton. But if you're the second best goalkeeper, you're not playing a minute. Yeah, there's times in soccer that you take all the heat for a goalie. Either you get a lot of balls going to or you, or it'll be idle totally. Right. I mean, you're like an island by yourself. Brian Leiber, thank you for all your time, your talent, and your treasure in soccer. Continued success for the Monarchs. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brian Leiber, Hall of Famer at CNU, head boys soccer coach at Menchville High School. Sports highlights will continue after these messages. Fitness with Alexis. 
Tune in weekdays 6.30 a.m., Mondays 7.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. And welcome back to our April edition of Sports Highlights, April 2018. It was a pleasure to talk to Brian Leiber, the head boys soccer coach at Menchville High School, at Greg Bick on Twitter. Reminder, sports scene, Saturday morning, 10 to 11, also on 100.1 FM, 1010 AM as well. It's a pleasure now to talk to Katisha Simpkins and Sturridge Evans, both of the Hampton Roads Lady Gators. Good to see you all. Yes, same here. Good to see you. Ladies first, how did you get involved in football? Um, I just, I've always been athletic, so... Um, and I love, I'm very competitive. My son played football in high school, so I always felt like, you know, if I could see him out there doing it, maybe one day I could. So I went on, um, went on Google and I found the Richmond Black Widows. I went out there, I tried out for the team and I made it and I got injured. I tore my meniscus and my ACL. So it put me down. Being at Richmond was like an hour away. Um, I figured, you know, me and, him, my, me and my partner had a conversation we should start you know, a football team locally where we stay at. And that's how it all began. I started out as running back, and now I play starting center for the Anthony Rose Lady That's Gators. awesome. How about you? How'd you get involved in football in general? Um, well, started out, you know, I would say uh, playing field football. You know, just with friends, we always play tackle in the rain, play mud football, come home, my mother would yell, I'd be covered in mud. And then went from there to start playing high school, high school ball, um, rec team, and then went to high school ball, and played there for a while, and then after that, you know, it's just kind of football and stuff wherever I, wherever I went. Even in the military, we still play rec ball. Mm -hmm. At Warwick High School, we spent midfield. Mm -hmm. Sunday. Even kill the man with the football. Remember those games as well. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, neither one of y'all from here. What made y'all like the Hampton Roads area? Um, my kids, I have two boys. And I didn't want them to grow up in the same lifestyle that I grew up in. So I brought them down here to slow it down, you know, a pace. You know, to keep my oldest one out of trouble. And... I mean, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I really did. I mean, you know, I maneuvered around till I got my best fit. So I this is it. home now. Yes, it is. So you, you're not from here either. No, um, um, <laughs> nowhere closer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the way I got down here was uh, military. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of high school, went straight into the military. And actually, this was my first station was here in the Brooklyn Shipyard. Then I left Station California and I came back. And what made it end up being home was. Uh, I got two kids, my son and my daughter, they're here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they kind of like it here. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere until y'all graduate. So. Right. What branch were you in? Uh, I did 80, eight years. Very good. Thanks for your service. Yeah. All right. So, Hampton Roads Lady Gators. Yes. That's still a novelty, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Talk about it. Um, Mr. Florida over here. <laughs> How was it to get a roster, first of all? Um... Pretty much, it was extremely hard, yeah. extremely hard. Women in football, I mean, you had a few that came out there, you know, we had our first, you know, initial tryout. We had a few that came out. We had a few that stayed. A lot of them couldn't take the contact. Once we got to the contact part, 90% of them quit. Wow, 90%. 90% of the team quit. And then um, we had, like last year, this is our second year, um, we started out with about 30 players, and by our last game, we only had 11 on the field. Wow, so that gives new direction of people going both ways, correct? Yes, yes, all, yes, the, way all the way from first quarter to the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest thing to me, it sounds like, Katisha, was sustaining. I mean, the, the practice, the weather, the time, the commitment, the family commitments, yes. just to get them that feel and sustain for a regular season. But there's practice involved, and then you also want to show that you're a team player, you just don't want to show up occasionally. Exactly. It takes a big time commitment. Yes, you have um, people who are, you know, setting their careers. We have military out there. We have shipyard workers. We have people that work in construction, um, warehouse workers. You have grandmothers, you know, um, aunts, uncles. You know, I mean, aunts and, you know, pretty much. Yeah, yes. all ages. What, what ages yes. do you have on the team? Uh, ranging right now, I think the youngest one we have is like 19, all the way up to uh, in their 40s. Wow. So what positions, have you played all types of different positions, what advice would you give to a young lady that wants to play for you, and how do people get in touch with the Gators? Well, we are, we are on social media. Um, you can reach us on Facebook at Hampton Roads, which is one word, and Lady Gators, 
you know, which is connected, and also on Instagram, Hampton Roads Lady Gators. We send out a lot of flyers through like Trash and Treasure and things like that to try to recruit for the team. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, hand out flyers, you know, word of mouth, pretty much things like that. It's really hard to get to, you know, fill the roster of women playing football. I'm sure. And of course, uh, you, you talk about it. Uh, how many games do you guys normally play? We're in April now. How many games do you have left? Um, well, we haven't started just yet. Um, but what we do is um, our first, it's our first game, we're going to play eight, eight games. So it'll be four away, four home. And um, once we get our first game, we're just coming up here soon. Yeah. And but people have to see game. you on the south side, though, right? Yes. Talk um, about that. Power 10 Stadium. We try to get fields on this side because this is where we're based. But being that they treat the fields for you know, the high school games, everyone pretty much, they couldn't accommodate us. So we had to go with a turf field. So um, Power 10 Stadium was very gracious to allow us to come out there and play on their field. Yeah, so does it still surprise you, I mean, to see the women playing football? Because that's not like basketball or baseball or even softball even. I would say every year, like she said, our second year. Um, from the first day out, you know, and she'll tell you, I helped her train up when she was playing for uh, the other team. And... And just every day, it's like something new. I mean, you get players that come from nowhere, out of nowhere, hit you up. Hey, I want to play. I mean, these are homemakers, doctors, police officers, where I just say they want to play. And you're like, have you ever played before? So, the, you know, it's always amazing. It just stays like, continuously. Just to see females do something that I did growing up, and they're learning it as not as kids but as adults. It's, it's really always Yep, we're talking to Katisha Simpkins and also Sturridge Evans. He's the head coach. She's one of the players, big part of the team for the Hampton Roads Lady Gators. They play on the south side, as both of these fine people mentioned as well. But you've seen a lot of women do the mixed martial arts, and that's instant contact. So yes. this is kind of like a natural progression. Yes, it is. Um, we actually consider it as a, colli a collision sport. Yeah. Um, for me, it's an adrenaline rush. From the first time I stepped on the field, after the first hit, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this initially will be my last season playing right. because I am the oldest person on the team. They, you're, you're ageless, of course. Yes, I am. Yeah. And all of the players on the team pretty much call me Coach Mom. I'm the okay. mom of the team, right. but I also assist with coaching and, you know, coaching up the other centers because I play starting center. I'm coaching up a few people right now, you know, to come behind me so that we don't lose that center position, you know, in you know, our future years. But, yeah, because you, there are some limitations. I mean, if a woman's yeah. pregnant, she's not going to play football. No, uh, no. Sustaining, it's not, this is not a sport for somebody worrying about their eyelashes or nails, correct? <laughs> oh, we have players that have eyelashes, nails. Yeah. I mean, it, we have the most feminine to the most masculine females. Right. I mean, he, I mean, you have some. You have all types, yes. which is good. You, have, you need a variety of people. Um, football has progressed a lot over the years as far as injuries. Does that concern you as far as concussions and what type of equipment and trainers do you have? Um, well, we have uh, we have trainers out there. Um, one of our trainers that actually really, he's really good at getting the agility and keeping them up. It's uh, Coach Guru. Um, and he's really good at what he does. But um, equipment-wise, you know, we stay with the standards, especially um, everything that changes as it goes on, you know, from whatever school is uh, doing new things, Texas Tech, Syracuse, whatever, which one's coming up with the new equipment, because you know, they always doing tests, especially with you know, concussions and stuff like that, and especially with padding. We always make sure everybody's fitted, uh, make sure it's fitting you right, and when it comes down to injuries or anything like that, we're big on that. Actually, uh, like my partner always says, you know what I'm saying, we're like a family, your health is worth more to me than you playing on my field, because mm -hmm. you still have a life after football and a family to go to. Right. So we always make sure if you got injuries, anything, shit, I'm one of the fastest ones to tell you you need to go to a doctor and come back with a doctor's note before you can play. Yeah, this is something, if you're not all in, it's very difficult, physically or mentally, because that's when injuries happen. Yes. We I also, our general manager is a registered nurse as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That helps as well. Yes. So you talk about uh, football as far as the time. Are there quarters? Are there halves? How does it work? Uh, just like professional football. Mm -hmm. um, right now, um, the league we play in, go by high school rules. So it's the same time frame. 12-minute quarters. So yes. Of quarters, just like boys. Yeah, we just say everything... Just like regular football, the only difference is the female playing. So what's the name of the league and how many teams are involved in the league? And how far geographically is it? Um, well, right now we're, we're in the USWFL. But that league is only, I believe, 11 teams. But we came from a league, which is the WFA, Women's Football Alliance. They have over, what is it, 70-something teams in the league. And, I mean, if you put all of the leagues together, it's 
like 120 teams nationally and internationally. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of teams out there. It's a growing sport. You have a lot of women right now who are working with the NFL that used to play, you know, women's football. Mm -hmm. So what's the future like? Future? Yeah, man. Great right now. Man. <laughs> we're just looking to go on forward and everything that we're doing. Um, after, you know, we, we're, we're talking about some new things going forward as in starting a little younger. You know, but girls like to play football. And there are a lot of girls out there that really want to play. So our future is going forward as in with my coaching staff and everything, me and myself. And I think I got like one of the best uh, offensive coordinators and defense coordinators around. Um, yes. That's Mike, uh, Mike Smith, which is my offense, and uh, John Lee, which is my defense. We're looking forward and just keep on growing, keep progression, um, harder with our trainings and keep my skills going. And as they come in, keep teaching and training. I mean, it's female football and, you know, women deserve the same rights. Of course. And how about officials for the game uh, as far as the referees and so forth? Um, we have some officials that officiate the, the high school from, I believe he's from the other side of the water. Um, we have to have six refs, you know, on the field at all times. Mm -hmm. So, but they're pretty good. We, we're going to keep the same reps that we had last year. You said a really interesting point during the course of the interview that you were down to 11 players one yes. time. That must have been really daunting. And they had me out there playing linebacker. Playing linebacker. I'm, I don't run nowhere. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just being honest. Tell, tell us a funny story. <laughs> tell us a funny story. But, because weight does make a difference. Yeah. Oh, my God. As far as being pounded. It was, they had, it was the last, what, like, last five minutes of the game, and we were down. 11 players. So they had to, you know, fill somebody in to play line at linebacker. Well, I mean, I knew the girl was fast. I knew it wasn't much I can do mm -hmm. but be a body out there. So the team took the ball. They handed the ball off to the girl. I ran as fast as I could. I hit the, first, <laughs> the person in front of me. Yeah. But she was already gone. By the yeah. time I looked back, she was already in the end zone. I'm like, what do y'all expect from me? Yeah. I'm, I'm a lineman. Right. <laughs> so there's some humor involved. Do you ever catch yourself laughing at all uh, at first? Man. Well, first, this is my partner, hey, man. Right. Not just my partner, this is like my best friend. Of course. So we go way back. So knowing how she can move, the linebacker wasn't best suit for it. Yeah. And I already knew that. But, you know, at the time with 11 players, man, these girls are playing cool and good on football. So we had to put her in. And when she got smoked, she looked at me. And all I got to do was just shake my head and just laugh like, I knew you wasn't going to get it, but you try. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of the thing. You have to have humor about yes, this. Yes. I mean, this is different. Let's face it. This yes. is not traditional, but life is about thinking out of the box. Yes. And congratulations to both of y'all for thinking outside the box. All right, so that was Katisha Simpkins and Sturge Evans the second. Yes. Your dad was Sturge Evans as well, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, I got that in there as well. All the best with the Hampton Roads Lady Gators. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you again. And how do people contact you through social media, correct? Yes, sir. Very good. All right, hope you enjoyed the April show of Sports Highlights. Brian Leibert, Katisha Simpkins, and Sturge Evans. I want to thank the great crew. I want to thank Fazoli's as well and all of our great staff here at NNPS-TV. For Ray Price, I'm Greg Bicavaris. Happy April. We'll talk to you soon.